planes, trains, and trucks that are too tall for bridges. It seems that the type of infrastructure we connect with most strongly is the kind that gets us where we're going. I was overwhelmed with the support on the last video and I got a whole bunch of emails from people who share my fascination with constructed facilities. I guess I stumbled onto something here which feels probably about as good as it can feel to find out that your life's calling might be to talk about infrastructure to strangers on the internet. I'm Grady, and this is What's That Infrastructure, where we divulge and discover the man-made world around us. I first want to say a huge thanks to all the people who sent in photographs to me since the first video in this series. I kind of tried this out on a whim, and the response was much bigger than I expected, so thank you. The vast majority of the submissions I received have been about transportation infrastructure, so I think we'll continue in that vein for episode 2. A lot of people were really interested in the bridge overhide impact protection and let me know about this bridge in Durham, North Carolina that gets hit so frequently that someone put up a webcam and made it a website. It's got a sacrificial steel beam that cuts up trucks like a can opener if they're too tall. Check it out at 11foot8.com. Nick Moore sent me a video of an overheight warning system in New Zealand that looks like it uses a pair of lasers to detect if a vehicle's too tall. Presumably there are some warning lights that would flash if the laser beams get broken. Interesting to see two systems serving the same purpose but on the complete opposite extremes of cost and complexity. Nick has a YouTube channel I like a lot with short tidbits of science and engineering and I'll put a link in the description. If you've ever driven into a tunnel on a sunny day, you know that feeling of being plunged from brightness into complete darkness, and there's a period of time where you're basically driving completely blind while your eyes adjust. Andreas sent in these pictures of a tunnel in Gothenburg, Sweden that has a sunshade before the entrance to allow drivers' eyes to adjust more gradually to the darkness. Very cool idea, and even cooler because Andreas' grandfather was one of the engineers that helped design this system. Tunnels aren't just for people, though. Charlie from Scotland sent in a picture of a project he worked on that included a culvert under a new road, not for water, but actually for badgers. This tunnel provides a quote-unquote mammal underpass so that local wildlife can safely get across the road. Dylan sent in this photo of a freeway sign in California and was curious about the angled frame around it. This one's got me stumped. I've never seen anything like this, so if you know what it is, let us know in the comments. If you ride a motorcycle, you might recognize this photo from Ewan in the UK. This is an inductive loop traffic detector, which is used by traffic signals to determine if a vehicle is stopped at the light. A metal vehicle stopped over the loop will induce eddy currents, reducing the inductance which can be sensed by the light controller. Some loops have a hard time sensing small vehicles like motorcycles, which can leave you stuck at a red light that never switches, so some riders install a magnet on their bike to try and increase the chances of triggering the light. Dan is the county engineer for a county in Iowa, and he sent in this video of his crew driving a pile using a vibratory hammer. Dan told me they do all their engineering and construction with in-house staff, which is something you don't see too often. Here they are using a traditional gravity hammer to check the bearing for the piles. They'll measure how far the piles moved after a certain number of blows from the hammer, and check that against the specification to determine if the piles pass or fail. And speaking of bridges, you might know that the two most common materials used in their construction, steel and concrete, actually expand and contract due to changes in temperature. For long structures like bridges, thermal movement, even over the course of a single day, can be on the order of inches or feet. And civil engineers have developed quite a few ways of accounting for movement in bridge designs. Carl Jansen sent this photo of a bridge beam supported on a mass of steel roller, and this photo of an interesting expansion joint. Carl posts cool civil engineering photos on his blog, which I'll link below. Greg sent in this photo of a bridge in Washington that's supported on one side by a rocker on a steel plate. And here's another rocker support on a bridge in Connecticut sent in by Adam Bookbinder. Jan sent in this photo of a bearing plate from a bridge in Wrocław, Poland. I thought it was cool to see the CE marking on the nameplate. Structural bearings have strict regulations in Europe to ensure their safety, just like electronic devices. Blaze sent in this photo of his kids Joe and Peregrine standing next to a huge roller support on the Sorley Bridge in North Dakota. They also found a USGS stream gauge mounted on the bridge. Very cool to see kids interested in infrastructure. 
Finally, Alvin sent in a photo of some pistons connecting bridge beams to a column. I believe these are lockout devices that allow the bridge to expand and contract due to normal thermal movement to keep the stresses from building up, but in the event of a strong motion event like an earthquake, the pistons resist movement, locking the beams and columns together so the bridge can act as a composite structure and minimize the chance of failure or falling debris. Again, huge thanks to all the people who sent in photos. If you've got a cool picture you'd like to share, send it to what's that infrastructure at gmail.com. Make sure you mention that it's okay for me to use it in a video and include your mailing address, because if I use your photo in a video, I'll send you a practical engineering sticker. For those wondering about project videos, I promise I'm working on one, but with studying for the PE exam and the brutal August heat here in Austin, things are just taking a bit longer out in the garage. Not to hype it too hard, but it is the most awesome project I've ever worked on, and it includes lasers, so stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching, and let me know what you think. <laughs>